Hi everyone, this is Noelle for Petite Garden Centers and we're at Casa Verde, one of my favorite spots. It is late winter and there are still a lot of house plants that we haven't gone over with you, but we're gonna share with one of our favorite, favorite types of house plants, the Sansevieria or the snake plant. And we love this plant, not only because it's super easy for a lot of people to grow, but it's also one of those plants that's a great air purifier and you wouldn't really th think it would be because it's not super leafy. It's more on the succulent side. So it is a great, great plant. First of all, to start out with the light. So light requirements on Sansevieria are very wide. You can grow them in very low light levels. You can grow them in bright indirect lighting. And believe it or not, you can actually grow them in bright sunlight too. Normally we will put them in the low light level category because there's not a lot to choose from down there in the low light level. So any of your Sansevieria will do very nicely. If you have some Sansevieria that have a little bit more variegation to them, then if you start to notice that variegation might be fading a bit or turning like a darker color, then maybe move them up a notch into a medium or brighter indirect light, but they do very, very well for us indoors. The other thing that we love about Sansevieria is watering. If you're not a waterer or a nurturer, that's a great thing for these plants. They cannot handle waterlogged soils. So you've gotta make sure you have a well-drained pot, lots of drainage holes or a drainage um, you know, dish to have the water flow into. And then you have to make sure that you're planting it in good, well-draining potting soil. Um, some people will actually plant these in a cactus soil mix as well. So it's really whatever you prefer, um, but they do very, very well in a good, well-drained potting soil. Um, the other thing that they do as far as watering is concerned, is you let these guys, you thoroughly water, let the water come out the drainage holes, do it one more time so you're saturating all the soil, let the water come out the draining holes, don't let it sit in water, and then you let them go dry before you actually rewater. So again, for those of us that aren't able to get and water our plants regularly, this is a great plant and can really, really tolerate that dry um, condition. The other thing that's interesting about this plant is not a lot gets to them. They really don't have very many problems indoors. Every once in a while you might see like a little spider mite web or you might see a mealybug here and there and we're gonna talk about some of those problems and they can be con controlled pretty readily. They do very, very little damage to the Sansevieria unless it's a big, big problem. Um, but this plant, it just stays green and will really just grow for you. Um, so what you wanna do is if you do catch that spider mite web, make sure that you're cleaning up the plant, rinse it under cold water, wipe down the foliage, um, and then go ahead and you can spray like a neem oil that's safe to use inside or outside, and that will work for spider mites, most of your household insect issues, and also it can work for fungal issues too. So um, that's something to keep in mind with the snake plant. Propagating these guys is pretty easy. They love to be compacted into their pots. And so I'm gonna show you just a piece. What they do is they grow rhizomes and um, Taylor will probably show you a close up, but the rhizome will kind of protrude out and then the baby plant will pop up from the rhizome and you can kind of see it on some of these bird nests, Sansevieria. They're showing a lot of new growth and babies that are just kind of popping over to the sides. In fact, Sansevieria is pretty, um, it's pretty common that they'll actually pop the roots or the rhizome out of the pot. So sometimes the pot will split and that plant will try to kind of move out a little bit more. But believe me, they love to be compacted into that pot. So, prop, or excuse me, planting these up or repotting them, um, you don't do it very often. It's like once every five to six years really. So don't worry about it if they're real jammed in there. One other thing that I wanted to mention is keeping the humidity up around them. Even though they're sort of succulent and can go very dry on the watering side um, for the root system, the humidity around them is a good thing. So increase that humidity if you can spray mist or you can put them on a humidity tray with pebbles. That's always great. And increased humidity is going to help you. It's gonna help your plants indoors and it will also reduce any spider mite issues you may have. Other than that, this is Sansevieria. 
uh, bird nest varieties here. There's some with stripe variegation. There's some with this very, very light green uh, coloring that's moonshine. Um, there are some that are cylindrical leaved. These are really kind of new on the scene, very, very unusual. Um, and this is one of my new favorites. This is called Danish Crown. Very, very thick or wide leaves on this one. And if you look at it and position it just right, it does kind of look like a crown. Um, so really cool varieties in this family, but again, all very easy to go grow, excuse me, low maintenance and just a great plant to have. Enjoy. Mm -hmm.